Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Transformation TV. I'm Michael Lekulugo, your host for today. Today I'll be talking about one of my favourite subjects in the Word of God. It's a subject that runs all the way through the Word of God really, and the theme is royalty. Now I know that we have recently just celebrated the Queen's Jubilee, but did you know that in God's eyes, royalty goes far beyond the House of Windsor? And that when you give your life to Jesus, you become part of the Royal House of Jehovah. I think that sounds fantastic. Well, listen, I'm going to share a scripture with you before you meet today's guests. And the scripture is taken from Revelation chapter 1 um, and verse 6. Verse 5 talks about Jesus shedding his blood for us, but verse 6 is the result. And it says, and he formed us into a kingdom, a royal race, priests to his God and Father. Did you hear that? A royal race. You are royalty. But why is it that so many of us um, don't live like we are royalty, you know, we have so many hang-ups, you know, we feel insecure, we feel inadequate, you know, and a lot of the things that we don't achieve in life, it's not because we're not able, it's really because of what we think of ourselves. So, the, the, I don't know if you've ever watched the, the Prince and the Pauper, really there's like a scenario there where, the, you know, the, the Prince was really a pauper for a while and he had to be reinstated, that's like many of us. Now, what I was wondering and what we're debating today is, is it just our background, is it just our circumstances why we sometimes fall into these personal prisons, these personal pits, or are there more sinister forces working behind the scenes, spiritual warfare? So without any further ado, I want to introduce you to today's guests, and that is Javan and Jacob. Nice to have you on the show. Now the reason why you guys are here is because you guys um, Wow, I mean, I'd have to call you modern day Davids because without any kind of formal training or any kind of whatever, you guys just came up with a production um, called The First Stage of Salvation, um, an amazing depiction of spiritual warfare. I mean, the way you guys capture what happens behind the scenes spiritually. I've got to ask you, I mean, I've been preaching the gospel for, for years, but really the way you guys came across a spiritual warfare kind of blew me away. Javan, you're like 18. So where did that idea come from? Where, where, where did it come from? Really, it, it wasn't something I was expected at all. I mean, I wasn't waiting for it. I wasn't even, I wasn't even praying for anything. But it's just a matter of, it's God's timing really. When he wants to do something, it kind of has to be done. And I believe that whatever he downloads into my spirit, I need to run with it. And I believe that he'll take it as large as he wants to take it. Wow. And yeah, this play was just, it was something where God was kind of teaching me what influences were about. And because there'd be certain times when I'd wake up and they just, I just feel down. I'd feel like there's just something over me that I just didn't understand. Right. And really, I'm really just a vessel that God was using. But right. so, was, so let me get this right. Yeah. There'd be times you'd wake up and it's not like there's anything bad happening in your life, but you would just yeah. feel like, yeah, a, like just, a depression trying to come over just, you. It's kind of like a burden, really. It's just like something's on top of me that I have to carry through each and every day. And it's almost like I just, as I said, it's like, it's like a tra training ground for us, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, throughout what we was doing the play, it's just really difficult for us to carry out what God wanted to do. But God's just kind of using us. We just stopped being obedient, really. Wow. So yeah. how did it come? Because you were at college, mm. weren't you? And then, yeah. and then what happened? So you're in the middle of college. And... I was, yeah, as I mean, I was in the middle of a lesson, which is funny. And um, we was doing work and I just felt, it's almost like when you spend time with someone, you realise like when they're coming, say with my dad, it, when he's coming downstairs, you know that he's coming type yeah. of thing. And yeah. when God came into the room, I was at that point in my life where I could tell when he's here. And he just, wow. he was just in, in, my, in my class and I could just feel wow. it so strong that I actually had to say to teacher, I need to go to the toilet. Went to the toilet and just really? floods of tears. And really I believe that was God kind of breaking me to bring me back up type of thing really. Wow. And that's when he began to kind of and download the idea for this production. Definitely. He started to really, wow. it's like, at first it was like a lesson, it was like a whole new lesson within my lesson. <laughs> and it was just teaching me really and then it, kind of evolved into a script as I started to write it down. And so you weren't you weren't in a convention somewhere, no, you weren't no. in the middle of service, no. you were actually in college and the Spirit of God visited you. Now, Joanne, do you, do you think that that can happen for anyone, that, that the Spirit of God? What, 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 what does it take really to have those kind of encounters? Because really? the production is amazing, so yeah, we know it's God, but definitely. what do you think it takes? It to... starts with small stuff, because I wouldn't be able to receive a production like that unless I was listening to God, and really okay. what it takes is you just put your heart into it. Because it's different from me saying I'm sorry and truly putting my heart into it. And really, 
God meets you where you're in the situation. So we've made that was in college at that time in that class. And you and had developed the kind of relationship with definitely, him definitely. where you could respond and be obedient. Yeah, I had to. Wow. It's almost like walking in a dark room, you need that light. And yeah. really, he was that light that was talking to me. Mm. It was just a matter of me running with it type of thing. That's really. amazing. And how old are you again? Oh, at the time I was, I think it was 17, for, just came 17 yeah. when I got wow. that. And then it's sort of kind of been developing. Guys, to really kind of get the context of what we're talking about, you, you need to order the book. The details will come on later on in the show and you'll be able to order yourself a copy to really understand what we're talking about here because it really is quite an extraordinary story and script and, and depiction. Now, I want to speak to you for a minute, Jacob, because you play a role in this, in this production, um, a character called Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. Um, the thing is, okay, first of all, I have to say that you're a very good actor, but really, it was like a bit scary. <laughs> I mean, the way that you depict the character had me sitting there with kind of like, I wouldn't want to meet that guy on the street. Where did that character come from? Was that a character you've been working on, or was that based on, on things you see around? Where did that character it, come it's from? It's definitely based on things I see around. It's. I don't know, it's a persona that you see a lot of people putting on, especially nowadays where you have to be, you have to have the advantage of the other person, you have to almost make that, make the people around you feel down so you can be up on that pedestal of other people so you can't be hurt and you don't feel vulnerable. And I think, I think, as like you said with Jamie, but in the play, Jamie was used, like Kyle Jerome was talking about influence, he was used as, he was that influence that was that the demons were able to work through to get wow. to to the other character because it, it basically it could it could have been drugs it could have been smoking it could have been anything it was just like he was that one thing that they knew could get through to the other character and it was like I don't know it was it was it was it was a deep, it was a deep so are you saying to me that some of the crimes that we see committed some of the mindless violence and just people just taking people out and just you know. You're saying that it's not just people in their, in their bad character, although we know that sometimes that's the case. You're saying that sometimes, um, especially the Bible teaches it, that there can be actually influences, demonic influences. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Wow. So, guys, um, I have to say, you guys kind of stand out. You know, as I said, I've described you as the Davids of our generation, but, you, you know, quite incredible, really, just your passion and your devotion for God and just the anointing that's on your life. How have you been able to remain true to who you are, you know, in the midst of, you know, being, so many are being swamped by the culture of the world and the culture of rap and all, all the kind of stuff. How have you managed to kind of stay shielded from that? How? I think for me personally, it was that, <clears throat> is that readiness to step out and be somebody type of thing. Because a lot of people are looking for, they're fighting for different things. Some people are fighting for respect. Some people are fighting to prove something to someone else. But really, even though I have to be honest, I've been in that stage where I was looking for that. I was on the streets and I was looking for that respect. I wanted people to look at me and be like, that's Javan type of thing. But with God, it's almost like he develops a new, new character, Come on. a new type of maturity. and. He began to develop a character in me, like, actually, you are, can, you're not that perspective, I don't see you like that. Wow. And what was really touching for me was that he never, he, he looked at me and he saw value, even though I saw Royalty. I saw, yeah, royalty is exactly what it is. Wow. And even Revelation 1 verse 6, the scripture that you're saying, it's almost like he was bringing me out of that place of me desiring respect to me kind of getting more of him. And it's almost like I needed to decrease so he could increase in me. And it takes, it takes a lot of work, it yeah. takes a lot of work because there's people around you that won't understand what you're going through. So I couldn't say to some of my friends that I used to have, oh wow. well, you know, I just wanted more of God. Do, do we understand yeah. that? Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, of course. I believe God, God really provided Jacob so we could feed off each other just iron shine fire. And that's been a really benefit for this play and for my life personally. So you know, what? I, one thing I loved about the, the, the production is that it's just so real. In, in other words, you, you could actually give it to any young person, you know, even, yeah. even, even guys out there on, on, on the street and they would be able to really relate but they'd also be able to kind of really understand where you're coming from um, that's just amazing I, I think that for those who are listening you know there are probably people caught up in behavior patterns that they don't even want to you know they, they, they don't they don't want to be like that but it, it like you were saying it's just the pressure of what's expected for those who are listening I'm gonna ask you to pray for our viewers you know um, 
just pray that the, the, the royalty in them, you know, the destiny in them would just come forth. I mean, you guys, I keep on saying it, like David, you know, he was just there you know, as a little shepherd boy, but there was royalty on him. And in the time, you know, when the time arose, the anointing came upon him. And of course he became one of the greatest kings of Israel. I see that happening with you. And I know that this production is like the first, but I want you to just pray, if you could, for the viewers, for those who just need that kind of breakthrough. Okay, all right, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Lord, I pray that you'll be with those that are watching. I pray that you'll continue to reach into those areas where they're feeling broken. Lord, I know that you are a craftsman, so you can fix the broken, Lord, and I know that who you are. I know that you will heal the, those areas where people are feeling injured. Lord, I pray that you'll meet them in their situation. Sometimes it may be in a pub, sometimes it may be at work or college. Lord, I pray wherever they are, whether they're in the lowest place or wherever they're really close to you, I pray that you'll help them. I pray that you'll strengthen them. I pray that you'll change that captivation to liberation, Lord. I pray that you'll reach into their lives and I pray that you'll direct them the same way that you did with me, the same way that you did with Jacob, the same way that you are using people and bringing them to those high places. I pray that you allow them to find something that's not just respect but love, Lord. I pray that your love will overcome those areas of their life. And I just release power into their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You know, I could just like bathe and bask in that prayer all day. Honestly, guys, if you were here, you know, and I know you can feel it out, you know, over the airways, but really just such a wonderful anointing. And why? Why has the Lord anointed the show today? Simply to let you know that you are not a pauper, you are a prince. Whatever you've done, whatever you're going through, the Bible calls you royalty. So like Prince William, it doesn't matter where he went, even if he was in the jungles of Africa, there's a kind of way that he would kind of carry himself because he knows who he is. He knows he just needs to get to the embassy and it'll be fine, jolly, jolly good sir. So with you, you just need to get to the place in God's presence and you just need to connect because you are royalty from the royal house of Jehovah. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in.